spending time in nature can have real effects on our body's responses to stress. I'd really like this research to help us bring the therapeutic power of nature to people when they really need it the most. My name's Alex and I'm researching the links between environment and health at the University of Exeter. At the moment my work is focusing on how digital experiences of nature might help to boost people's well-being. There's pretty good evidence to suggest that spending time in nature can have real effects on our body's responses to stress. Japanese researchers have looked at this lovely idea of shinrin-yoku, which literally translates to forest bathing. When people spend time in Japanese forests, their blood pressure falls, their heart rate calms, levels of the stress hormone cortisol tend to drop. Beyond this sort of direct response of our bodies, our minds can also recover more quickly from stress and fatigue when we're in nature. So what's going on here? Well, well, one of the ways that we try and explain how natural environments can help us recover from stress or fatigue is by using attention restoration theory. And this invokes this wonderful idea of soft fascination. So something like watching waves breaking on a beach or sunlight flickering through the leaves in a forest. These soft processes allows the bits of our brains which deal with concentrating, focusing to relax and recover. So for a long time, researchers tended to focus their efforts on understanding the therapeutic potential of green spaces. So that might be parks, gardens, the countryside. And in recent years, we've started to add more detail to that understanding. And one of the areas that's emerged is this importance of blue spaces. So that's any environment that features water, it could be lakes, rivers, canals, and of course, the coast. And what's really interesting is it looks like the margins might be most important, where those two environments, the green and the blue, meet. We know that spending time in the natural world is a rich, multi-sensory experience. And in recent years, we started to pay more attention to how the sounds of nature might be therapeutic. Listening to songbirds, so things like blackbird, robin, wren here in the UK could be really important. But that also sounds of flowing water are really highly rated. Waves breaking on a beach, babbling brook, and of course that brings us back to blue space again. So how do we make the most of this research? How do we put some of this learning into practice? Well, I guess the first tip is to get out there if you can. If you live close to the countryside, to the coast, or you have a park at the end of the road, you can go blue if you can. So if possible, trying to bring some of these water-based elements into your outside experience, watching the sun shimmer on a lake surface or listening to the sound of a gently flowing river, these could be the perfect ingredients to help you relax and unwind. If you can't get outside and visit nature, you can try and bring some of these elements inside. There are also lots of videos and soundscapes available online, which can help you to immerse yourself in nature at home. I'd really like this research to help us bring the therapeutic power of nature to people when they really need it the most. So when they might be stuck in hospital, or working a long shift, for example. My hope is that by improving understanding of how human health and the health of the environment are inextricably linked, that we might be able to start to protect environments in a way which allows them to be valued and to thrive, but also for the health of populations to benefit from that too.